Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're testing a couple of budget options for the Intel B660 motherboard platform. The last generation of Intel's B560 motherboards did actually have some problems at the lower end. There were motherboards like the ASRock HDV with poor power delivery and very low power limits, which led to them actually throttling even basic CPUs like the i5-11400. We're really hoping that things have improved for this generation and that there are good B660 motherboards available at reasonable prices that allow you to take full advantage of the great power and value of Intel's i5 and i3 12th generation CPUs. To find out, we've purchased a couple of budget B660 motherboards ourselves to subject them to our test routine. We've got a couple of CPUs under test here, the Intel i5-12600. It is the non-K version of the CPU, so it's not overclockable and it doesn't have those e-cores, but it does boost slightly higher than the 12400, which is the more common recommendation. We've also got the Intel i7-12700K, which is obviously not a CPU you'd normally pair with an entry-level B660 motherboard. However, it's useful for the purposes of testing and working out where the power limits of these motherboards may lie. So stick around because our results will help you decide between these motherboards and also whether you need to stick either of them on your avoid list or whether you can happily purchase them knowing that they will offer you full performance of the CPU you're going to put on them. First up we chose the Asus Tough Gaming B660M-E. This board is at the base level of the Tough range. It uses a 10 stage power design with Digi Plus digital VRM control. Asus don't make any particular boasts about this VRM design and there's no heat sinking on the upper power stages although the back of the board has the standard TUF style alloy heat sinking. There is a slightly more expensive plus version with heat sinking on both sections of the VRM and a slightly higher specification VRM setup. This board overall is a competent basic spec and an attractive option at around $150 and that's why we chose to test it. We will do a full review of this Asus Tough motherboard in a future video so please do click like and subscribe if that's something that interests you. It really helps our channel out and it does mean we can continue to bring you this kind of content. The other board we chose to purchase was the ASRock Pro RS. Past experience warned us off the HDV, so instead we opted for this B660 Pro RS. This is the cheaper of the two boards that we're testing at about $120, and it has an eight phase power design, but it does add heat sinking to both sections of the VRM. It uses a basic RichTech RT3628AE controller. Again, we'll cover the full features of this board in a separate review for the sake of brevity here. But it has got a decent overall basic specification, and it would meet the needs of a general purpose or gaming PC, as long as it does an i5 justice, of course. Let's move on to the testing then. We ran a suite of tests on both of these motherboards using two CPUs, the i5-12600 non-K and the i7-12700K. To ensure that we had a good control, we ran both of these CPUs as well on our MSI Tomahawk Z690 to ensure that we could understand the performance of these CPUs where power throttling or boost clock throttling wasn't a concern. Both of those CPUs run to full potential on that motherboard. In Cinebench R23 and using the i5-12600 CPU, we can see that it performs identically on the Z690 Tomahawk and on the Asus Tough B660M. Looking at the charts, it boosts a 4.4 GHz all core on both boards and peaks out at about 100 watts power draw, which is normal for this CPU. The ASRock RS, however, posts a significantly lower score of about 11,735 versus 13,500 for the same CPU on the other two boards. The situation is much the same with the i7-12700K. Whilst the ASUS Tough happily matches the Z690 motherboard, the ASRock lags behind again by about 1,600 points. What's a bit odd is that this is a proportionately smaller gap, indicating that this isn't as simple as a hard power limit at work. Single core speeds, however, look to be normal, with all of the boards posting very similar results. This indicates that it's not a boost limiting behavior that's causing the variation on the multi-core results, but something else. All of the boards allow the CPUs to reach and sustain their peak single core speed. Blender is a 3D rendering program that again uses all cores available to it to render out a scene as fast as possible. We ran a couple of tests across both of these CPUs on the motherboards to see how they performed. Here the ASRock again shows a significantly longer render time across our two tests, particularly with the 12600 which takes two and a half minutes longer on the ASRock Pro RS than the same CPU running on the other two motherboards. It was during this test as well that we noticed that after a period of time, the 12600 does drop to a 65 watt power consumption. We also used 3D Mark's test suite using Time Spy and Firestrike, which are gaming oriented benchmarks, but they do have a component which again is a test of an all core load on the CPU. It's much shorter duration though, so what you tend to find is that longer term power limits don't come into play. The ASRock shows a lower score in both TimeSpy and Firestrike when running the i5-12600. However, it performs very similar to the other two motherboards when running the i7-12700K, and it actually outperforms the ASUS board in Firestrike. This highlights the strange behavior we saw in Cinebench. 
If it were a power limit problem, we'd expect the demands of the i7-12700K to expose it more, but here it's doing better with that CPU. To test gaming performance, we ran a couple of in-game benchmarks to see what kind of performance differences we might see there. These are representative of normal gaming loads, and we run them at 1080p with a powerful GPU, the RTX 3080, to expose CPU performance. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which isn't overall particularly demanding of the CPU, we saw broadly similar performance on both the i7-12700K and the i5-12600 across all three motherboards. In Rainbow Six Siege, we saw a more marked difference with the i7-12700K, with the ASRock around 10% behind the other two boards. Whilst it's slightly slower than the other boards, 30 FPS at 500 frames per second average isn't wild, but it is a significant difference. Overall then, it looks like all of these motherboards allow the same performance in gaming and single core workloads, where they allow the CPU to reach peak single core clock speeds. However, there's a very marked difference when we subject them to sustained all core workloads, with the ASRock RS falling significantly behind the others. So what's going on? Really, there's only one graph I need to show you to explain the differences in these B660 motherboards' performance. This is a log of the CPU power consumption and boost clocks as each motherboard completes a run of Cinebench R23 with the same CPU, the i5-12600. And I do mean the same CPU, it's literally the same in both cases. The motherboards are configured as default. We can see that the ASUS Tough, shown here in orange, draws around 100 watts as it allows the CPU to run past normal power limits. It doesn't limit that power over time, and consequently all six cores maintain 4.4 GHz throughout the workload. This is the maximum quoted all-core boost clock for the CPU. However, the ASRock behaves differently. First of all, it holds the CPU power at 85 watts, but this still allows the CPU enough power to boost to 4.4 GHz all-core for the initial part of the test. But then, at around 42 seconds, the second power limit known as PL1 cuts in and reduces the CPU power to 65 watts. This causes the CPU core speed to drop to around 3.9 GHz and you can see that this makes the run take longer to complete. This explains both the lower Cinebench scores and the much longer Blender render times. In Blender in particular, it's spending the bulk of the time of the render at that 65 watt limit, with much lower core clocks as a result. Things get weirder when we look at the i7-12700K and the performance differences there. Here the CPU isn't limited to 85 watts, but 120 watts. This means that whilst it now limits the P cores to 4.3 GHz versus the ASUS board that achieves 4.7 GHz all cores, the performance gap is actually somewhat smaller. The other change in behaviour is that the motherboard now no longer limits boost duration, and maintains 120 watt power throughout a 10 minute run of Cinebench or Blender with this CPU. Meanwhile, the ASUS board supplies 200 watts indefinitely, which is impressive, but perhaps not particularly wise given the VRM specification of that motherboard. This actually clears up the otherwise anomalous behaviour of the ASRock. The performance difference is smaller on the i7 because it allows an i7 CPU more power than it does when an i5 is fitted. And as for the third part in this hat-trick of weirdness from ASRock, we couldn't fix this. Most motherboard manufacturers allow you to play with power limit settings in their BIOS, and the ASRock Pro RS is actually no different. If you dig into BIOS settings, there are at least two options which appear to allow you to alter the boost behaviour in terms of power of a fitted CPU. It specifically shows PL1 and PL2 power limit settings and lets you set them up to 140 watts manually, or there's a base frequency boost option which gives the appearance of setting these limits to 140 watts. However, applying those settings and verifying that they've been applied yielded absolutely no difference in performance. Both CPUs performed the same after having the power limit supposedly lifted, so both were underperforming significantly under all core workloads on this motherboard. We tried everything we could think of, including updating to the most recent BIOS, CMOS resets, reapplying both of those power limit options in various combinations, and lifting the current limit to the CPU as well. Doing any or all of these things yielded no difference. Each CPU was still capped, the i5 CPU to 85 watts, and the i7K CPU limited to 120 watts, no matter what we did. So it looks like for B660, unfortunately, power limits were a problem again. First of all, let's take a look at the good news. The ASUS Tough is a relatively affordable and decently featured B660 motherboard that will run an i5 or an i7 to full potential. Because it makes life easy in defaulting to enabling multi-core enhancement, it's an option when you first boot the board up, it says, would you like to enable multi-core enhancement? Press F1 to continue, and it basically makes that the default option. I think pretty much any user, when confronted with that screen, will hit F1 to continue, and that then lifts the power limits. Whilst that makes sure that it does perform really well with an i5, we'd question perhaps the sense of that for uh, certainly an i7K CPU, 
although that's not really a CPU you'd pair with the motherboard anyway. For gaming and general use though, the Asus TUF is a fantastic option, and it's a board we'll happily recommend to pair with a non-KI5 CPU. We will be doing a full review of the motherboard in future, so you can get a better look at it. Now onto the bad news. ASRock have fallen foul of power limits again, but in a slightly different way this time. In some ways, you can understand what they're doing here. They are attempting to make the CPUs conform to Intel's power limits, but actually they haven't done it correctly. At default, this motherboard should allow a short-term power limit for the i5 CPU of 117 watts. That's what Intel claim on their Intel page is the power limit for the CPU under short duration. And the long-term power limit is actually 65 watts. What we've seen here is a hard limit at 85 watts, followed by a long-term power limit of 65 watts. And that means that this CPU simply can't perform on this motherboard, particularly under all core workloads. To compound that, we can't work out why the i7 CPU is never actually restricted to its long-term power limit and is given an arbitrary 120 watt limit for the entire duration of the test. And this highlights the problem with the i5 specification because clearly this motherboard is capable of delivering 120 watts, its VRM specification is actually fairly reasonable, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be allowed to give that higher power limit to the i5 CPU and perform really well. I spent the better part of a day digging through settings, running and rerunning tests, trying everything I can think of. I've looked for solutions online and I've even reached out to ASRock support as well to ask them what's up with this board and is there a setting that I'm simply not seeing. That said, digging into BIOS to lift wattage limits and perhaps CPU current limits and things like that is not something I'd expect the average user to do. And it's really disappointing because I'd expect somebody buying a i5 CPU, a non-K CPU, which they're not expecting to be particularly power hungry, and indeed they're not particularly power hungry for the 12th generation, you'd want to put that on a you know, mid-range B660 motherboard, which is by far the, from the cheapest thing you can buy. This is not a particularly cheap motherboard, it's still over $100. And then there's the fact that despite offering settings in BIOS to allow you to adjust power limit settings, they appear to have no effect and there's no way to actually lift the performance of either of these CPUs through giving them a little bit more power. The reason I find this so disappointing is that this is a board that's marketed at the mass market and at gamers. It even says on its product page that it allows enhanced performance for gamers, although it does make some weird little caveats, like it says that it's suitable for light load gaming. I'm not really sure what that means. But still, it's not unreasonable to put a mid-range i5 non-K CPU on a B660 motherboard of this kind of feature and price and expect to have it perform to its full potential. This kind of motherboard behaviour is why we try and encourage people to build their own PC and stay away from pre-built PCs. It's absolutely typical of many pre-builts that they will put in substandard motherboards and to protect the circuitry on the motherboards for power delivery, they'll enforce arbitrarily low power limits. So why should you buy an advertised i7 CPU? It will never perform to the potential an i7 CPU should be because of those reduced power limits. And here we're seeing the same kind of behaviour on a motherboard that you'd buy as an individual component to put into your own PC. This generation of Intel i5 and i7 CPUs and even the i3 are really great value. But in order to make the most of that value, you need to be able to buy affordable motherboards that allow them to perform. We'd just like for a mainstream B660 motherboard to run an i5 CPU to its full potential, and I don't think that's too much to ask when you're paying $100 and up for a motherboard. Unfortunately then, until we know a little bit more or find out a way to fix this and lift power limits on this motherboard, we can't recommend the ASRock Pro RS at the moment. If you're just using it for gaming and general use on an i3 or i5 CPU, it'll probably do fine and you likely wouldn't really notice a difference. But the thing with PCs is that they're versatile machines and you might want to do more varied work with them. Your needs might grow in future. And at that point, if you do start doing all-core rendering workloads, demanding workloads on this CPU, which should be more than capable of it and give really good performance, you might start to run into the limits of what the motherboard will allow it to do. We saw in the last generation with B560 how different performance could be just depending on those manufacturer power limits and how they're applied. And unfortunately, it looks like we're in that same circumstance with B660 as well. You do need to shop very, very carefully when you're choosing motherboards to ensure you're going to get the full potential out of an i5 CPU. We are getting this information together for our B660 motherboard roundup, so please click like and subscribe if that's something you want to see. It helps our channel out massively when you do that and allows us to continue to bring this kind of content. We're actually doing the testing, getting into the nitty gritty of how these motherboards perform in order that we can make the very best recommendations to you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please do check out premiumbuilds.com where we've got loads of advice and guides to help you get the absolute best value for money when you build your next PC.